All right, welcome back to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add in some more functionality that you definitely need to know when you are spawning anything or just um, how Construct 3 works. So let's take a look at some of the sprite specific functions here. So if you double click here, you can see that there is a lots of events here. Uh, that you can uh, you can take a look at here. Now let's go ahead and let's um, do one of the ones that you will definitely work with. It's on created. Okay. So if we look at on created here, we can do a bunch of things. So for instance, we can change the size, or let's set the angle because that's actually probably a little bit better here. So the angle of course is the rotation here. So let's set the angle to 45. Okay. Now what that means is that for instance, if I look at this here, I can set the angle. And if you look at this angle up here, you can set it to pretty much whatever you want, right up to 360, right. And then at three, of course, 360, it goes all the way back around because of course, there are, in fact, 300 and uh, 60 degrees in a circle. So if I set this to 45 degrees, you'll see that, well, they all start at 45 degrees. And, the, and so let's just walk through what is happening here. So every two seconds here, we're going to spawn the enemy. And when the enemy is spawned, we on created, we set it to 45 degrees. Okay, so there we go. Now we can, of course, actually set this to random as well. We can set this between zero. And if you do 360, sometimes this works and sometimes this doesn't. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do it. It does work in Construct 3, but I've been around in many different game engines over the years, and sometimes this doesn't work. So generally, what I end up doing is I end up doing 359. Now, in Construct 3, this does work, but in, an, in other areas, this doesn't work. And the reason is, is that in theory, 0 and 360 are the same thing and it sometimes confuses the computer. So I always go 359 if I wanted to do a random degrees here. So you can see here, that is, it's basically whenever I, um, whenever I add uh, or spawn, it will exactly, uh, it will, whenever the item spawns or the enemy spawns, it will set a random angle. Now you can do multiple things at once here. All right. Um, so for instance, uh, you can set in uh, a bunch of different uh, angles here. Um, the other thing you can do is set the opacity. Okay. And remember the opacity uh, is, um, uh, remember the opacity is the transparency. So let's say we want to set this between a random, um, you know, between let's say 20 and 100. Okay. And by the way, I'm just giving you some examples on what you can do here um, in a game. All right. Uh, so, you know, for this particular set of examples here, do we need to, um, uh, do we need to necessarily set the opacity here? I'm just giving you some examples of what you could possibly do. And you can see here that the opacity of each one of these here uh, does change here. And actually, this actually looks pretty good because it does add some variety to the game here. Uh, before, if we don't do that, you'll see that it looks pretty standard, but this actually looks pretty neat. Okay. Now let's say you're coding around and you just, you might want to add in this opacity later, but you want to see what it looks like when you, when you don't have it. Well, one thing you could do is you could delete this or you could right click on it and um, and you can uh, you can right click on this or I, I believe you just push D it will disable it so now that one line of code is disabled now why would you do this well when you're debugging oftentimes you need to go through a, a process and you need to um, you need to figure out whether or not something uh, is working or not. And you do that by disabling certain lines of code. So if you know that this line of code works, then you might disable it and see if it's something else that's doing the problem, right? So the other thing is, is you can always test, will this affect the game in, uh, in, in a certain way? So that does work as well. So let's go ahead and maybe let's add in one more um, item here. So you can also 
there's also the size in position here. So you can set um, the size, for instance, right? And you can you can set the size to um, now. I remember that this particular enemy was 50 by 50. So let's say you wanted to add in, you know, a random size between. Uh, that's probably too small. So let's say um, this. So the width and the height is there. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's do that here. And you'll see that all of these are now different sizes. And I think that looks kind of neat as well. Okay. So that's a little bit different though than if we set the scale, right? So if we set the scale, so one is the original size and two is double the size. So let's say we wanted to set in the random between let's say 0 0.8 and 1.2. And you want to make sure that that's an actual comma, right? And you'll see that we have something similar, um, but this time they're all squares because we're just setting the scale of it, right? So if I set the scale to let's say four, every single one of them is going to be four times the size, all right? So that's what scale does, okay? And by the way, see what I'm doing here? This is something that I tend to do a lot in my games, uh, is I tend to, uh, when I create something, I tend to give it just a little bit of extra um, originality to it. And the reason I do that is that if everything looks the same, your brain is going to understand that, even though you, you might not consciously understand that. And by doing this, for instance, uh, you'll see that, you know, it's just adding a little bit more variety. Some are bigger, some are smaller, etc. Right. And if you really wanted to uh, make something interesting, the bigger one, the bigger, you know, kind of items that you would uh, maybe perhaps collect here, um, you know, or would destroy, you might get bigger or more points. Let's take a look at some of the other items here. Now, of course, I can um, I can go through each one of these here, and I can um, and I can uh, show uh, different items, um, or I can I can definitely show different uh, items here, because a lot of these are useful, but you don't always use them. All right. So the the other one that I definitely use is the visible here. So you can technically make each one of these invisible. They're still there, but um, they're still there, but they're just invisible. So I tend to use that one a lot as well. Okay. So there you go. That's how you, um, that's how you uh, add in functionality to when something is created.